The German railroads have always, ever since the Franco-Prussian Wars, been one of the key components of military logistics for Germany. And Hitler was, from his 1933 election campaign, well aware of how trains and planes could play a key importance in him being everywhere. So after coming to power and his plans for expansion formed, so did his need for secure transportation. And his armored special train was ordered. It was delivered in 1939, Sonderzug America, which changed its name in 1942 after America entered the war to Brandenburg. It was on average 430 meters long as different carriages could be added or taken off depending on the purpose and duration of the particular trip. En route, fresh locomotives would stand by and be changed every 200 kilometers. The train would carry up to 200 people. It included a barber's chair, kitchen, baths, SS security detachment card of 30 men. There was two flat cars and two locomotives. It would carry radio car and a phone central, which would be plugged in wherever the train would stop. In addition, America included an escort car, a dining car, two sleeping cars for Hitler's associates and guests invited to the train, two cars for the staff and a car for the head of the press office with a shortwave radio transmitter. So for the secure locations where the train expected to stop and remain at any length, required a lot of logistics and security support and a defensive perimeter. Hitler had four heavy train shelters constructed, two for Anlage Mitte, which we visited earlier. But Hitler was never actually there. The two others, however, are different. In southern Poland, he had one large train tunnel bunker constructed, and 15 kilometers approximately from that, another one, but quite different. It was built into a mountain. This is where Hitler and Mussolini would park their trains and meet, and from here they would fly to the front line in Ukraine. Here also Hermann Göring, Himmler, Keitel, Rommel, would use these bunkers on occasion. So there is a serious fortified perimeter and defensive bunkers around the train shelter, and these we will visit today. The shelters were constructed by Organisation Tod, by between four to eight thousand workers from Germany, as well as by use of forced labors. All done in extreme secrecy. The locals had a curfew, and a huge fence was erected around the site. The bunker was 480 meters long, 8 meters wide and 12 meters tall, with reinforced concrete walls of between 2 to 3 meters thick. Here were also barracks, administration, maintenance buildings for daily operations, and of course large bunkers with the power plants. It was also gas-proof, and it contained sleeping quarters, shelters, and technical tunnels and parallel tunnels inside. But there's also something else, and strange about this place. First, it was claimed to have cost more to construct than the entire complex of Wolfslayer. Now that leads to some serious questions as to how and why, and what else was built here that we don't see. Numerous locals, still living here from the time, as well as soldiers and engineers who worked here and survived to testify, have said they saw huge underground halls and rooms under the tunnel bunker. And a vast amount of dirt was also seen transported away during construction, leading again to why it was an above-ground tunnel. So what did they need all that dirt from? And what exactly did they see? Now remember, we are not that far from the rocket test facility of Belisnia which later in the war V-2 rockets were perfected. However, this was constructed in 1940-41, before the rockets came online. It's also claimed that the huge underground bunker was constructed for Hitler here, and some claims were made that his train pulled in, yet he never left the bunker. We know he did, because there are photos of that, 
But why would we claim him remaining in the train in a bunker, unless there was somewhere else he could have gone unseen? Also, the train bunker was determined to be of building strength A, capable of withstanding direct hits by 220mm shells and that of a nuclear blast, opening more interesting doors such as where did that designation come from before the first nuclear bomb test have gone off. Now Hitler visited here the first time on 27 August 1941 for a meeting with Mussolini, from where they drove to the nearby airfield and flew to Ukraine to visit the front line. In this photo, you can clearly see the two men standing outside the train bunker, which is peeking behind them. The meeting this time took place in Hitler's train, but again there are different accounts of this, which also claim that the two men held their meeting in a nearby villa. Now one thing I can't help but to notice, here outside, the great outdoors is, oh no, I can't find it. Yeah, up there, right there, is just a little bit of tar that looks like weatherproofing. And that is all I could find of it. I can't believe weatherproofing would have covered this and then have disappeared. I also equally can't believe they used just a little, so I'm a little, a little confused there. And here you got the steel doors still intact. And you have the little outer building, which is really interesting. Because this, I think this was the first of the large bunkers and this is a huge deal door with the entrance house here reinforced this is just a heavy bucket you know what this still moves it's not even rusted shut this actually moves that's amazing the locking mechanism well, it feels hollow but And that's a nice initiative with a little spider. This does curve as well. Now, I gotta pay attention to see how we get down underground. There's some dudes doing something down there. That looks interesting. It's a much nicer, nice and clean and the connectors are the same. And the parallel hallway is on this side here. And it's not full of water. I like that part. And here's a nice long technical hallway. That again is not full of water and you know how I feel about that right now. This is where it ends. The steel doors are in place here. That's absolutely awesome. That's amazing that nobody destroyed or took or scrapped all of this. Somebody kept this safe for the longest time. These guys need a medal. That's really something. Even this looks like you got the original writing on it with the details. Overpressure valve. I have the overpressure valve almost looks like they could still work. They almost do, don't they? They do. The overpressure valves actually move. Holy shit. They're not only that they're there, they're also working. Wow.
this is special. Everything is here. Just like when they left it. Let's go up here, take a peek. There's something really cool about everything being in place here. Now, there are several other bunkers surrounding this. And we're gonna go have a look at those. There seems to be a few more supporting this one. And that the other, or the other two. Again, some of these were repurposed to make munitions and uh, car engines. Mercedes had workshops in some of these, and that could be why we're not actually seeing any train tracks. As you may have noticed, for a rail bunker, there are no trail tracks, train tracks. However, here are the cross beams. Gotta love that the steel doors are still intact and in place. You have to love that. This is just exactly the perfect and appropriate amount of light for a train bunker. I couldn't have done it any better. This is far more realistic. That's exactly what it would look like. But that they managed to save this with everything in it is is really something special. I wonder if the ventilation tract is missing though. It really does make me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy that the steel doors are still in place. All right, let's face it, it doesn't take much to make me smile. Now, do I see a technical tunnel entrance? Let's see, it's not my birthday today, but you never know. These things happen. I see the problem. This is the round the cables would come up from. Now, unfortunately, the problem is it is flooded, as we can see, but it's interesting that, of course, uh, imagine the ladder wasn't there. This is the hallways that curves with the cables down from the technical room, and they would come up here, and then they would run uh, down alongside the, uh, the bunker through all these channels where you see the all these cable ducts all these cement hatches that's the technical tunnel running down the side and there's of course one running on the other side as well and i would almost assume well if you had any doubt you see here's the grate and you see where the cables are coming up and then being spread out to the entire train or the entire tunnel of course but you see this is where the cables were that's actually really interesting to see. So the cable ducts will, again, flooded, that's fine. Um, we know where they came from, the, the power station. Dispersed the electricity to wherever it was needed. That's really just very straightforward. And of course you need lighting, machinery. Uh, there would have to be some technical equipment, some possible for emergency repairs or maintenance so there would have to be electrical outlets in a lot of different places and this was a one way in one way out as well from what I can see oh, 
let's take a look down here. See now you're curved to the point where you can't actually see the entrance. It's just a slight curve. It's almost so slight it it's almost impossible to think that it would have made any difference. Um, for tactically for in case a bomb came close to the entrance. And the notes were that this was the first one built and it was built 1940-41 which of course makes sense after 41 again 42 and 43 and the war was turning and well the armies were technically still advancing until Kursk although driven back from Moscow It's very interesting that we're walking on, they didn't even cement it over, we're walking on, on tiles, on a nice little stone floor, which I actually think is somewhat surprising. <laughs> Makes me wonder if this was a post-war floor cleanup, because if they were just going to stick a factory in here, I would think they would have just cemented over, covered up the uh, the entire floor like they did in one of the other bunkers close to Warsaw of these and here maybe we'll find the answer they uncovered the dirt you see what they did they took away the the surface that was poured in over and the dirt and this is where the rails would have been upon here. So it appears that they removed, you know, the rails, filled them in, filled this space in with sand, and then they put on these little cement tiles on the entire floor. It's just hard to believe that that would be the simple solution if it was for a wartime factory. It's almost too elaborate, honestly. But I'm not, I'm not complaining that it's nice. These octagon tile that you see, a lot of shopping streets. It seems very elaborate though. All the doors are here. That's awesome. I see daylight. Let's see where that goes. Shall we? This is so okay. So here you can actually see I'm walking on the technical tunnel now. So the rail was offset slightly to one side to allow for the technical. That's actually a significant design feature. Makes me wonder that the technical part actually needed more space than I would have thought. Here's a brush of air, and here is a very wet technical entrance down for the maintenance of the uh, cables. And I have a hunch that this is going to be closed, and I was right. And the construction of this, this is pretty damn not nice. I mean, this is the cement over the, I wonder if this is, it's not the construction wood, I believe this might have been a peacetime fix because something happened to this place. 
it has been encased a little bit in wood. I think this is a contemporary repair somehow. my way back to the entrance and go find some of the other bunkers around here. I have to duck in here for a minute. The arrow out just in case I had any doubt. Here's the steel door in place as well. Wow. Nothing bad happened to this place. It is completely intact. And even the outer steel door is still here. Holy hell. Will you look at that? No more imagining steel doors. Here they actually are. That's amazing. How are these still here? And all of them, and in a country that has a proclivity for appropriating metal, steel, door, metal, anything metal. And they should all be individually closed off. All rooms could be sealed and made airtight. That also means there'll be air coming in here or there would be right there, a ventilation and filter unit. And there was in each one of these rooms. Outstanding. That's something I haven't seen. There's actually a hole. A square hole, I would certainly assume for ventilation. I actually almost see how thick it is. That's actually interesting. I, I would think having a built-in weak spot would not be something you would want to do. And here, even on the other side, the doors are in place. That's very, very cool. The fact that it's flooded, less cool, but we can work with it. <laughs> what an amazing place. Even the electrical outlets are still here. I mean, it looks pretty authentic, but it also looks fairly new. I don't know, maybe. Someone did put electrical in here. Maybe this was used during the Cold War by the Poles or Russians. It is possible. It is possible. I will say, but... Let's check. All right, all right, it's flooded. I get it, I get it. But the steel door is still here. All alongside. This must have been used in some way after the war because I mean there's everything is still in place the infrastructure is here the doors are here it would be almost impossible if this thing has ever been abandoned for everything to still be intact inside I will try to ask in my very best impersonation of broken English and Polish. wondering if this additional construction 
was a post-war construction for whatever this was used for. Obviously, there's a driving ramp. Or it was a wartime addition when it became a factory. I cannot actually tell. The doors, certainly authentic, but this outer part, I don't know. But isn't it nice to see the naked construction? I drove 200 miles extra so I could show you one that's not engulfed and covered in trees and moss. Although I will say the moss gives it a little extra je ne sais quoi. N'est-ce pas? But here outside I see foundations of what I'm hoping is not the technical bunker, the energy, but there's foundations on something here that was here and have been removed. It could also just be... <sighs> well, that's weatherproofing right there. So this was an outside part. Maybe this was a loading ramp or meeting place. Hard to say. I would imagine that the technical bunker and the generator station is down here, beyond this building right there. I don't think this is war damage as much as water erosion. There's no weatherproofing on this thing, and that will have to take its impact on the naked cement at some point. It's definitely one of the contemporary buildings. I would have expected to see quite a few of these. And there might have been, but this is a fairly straightforward construction of masonry. At the other sides. But looking at this road here, looking closer at this building and the corrugated sheet metal roof, I wonder if this is a Cold War construction that was used after. Maybe even this road entirely. It does have a somewhat of a Russian feel to it. Or, well, we'll go with Eastern European feel to it then. Wouldn't be unthinkable for the Russian military to build their own infrastructure, even one in Poland. But I haven't found anyone to ask. It's just a hunch I have that this might not have been World War II construction. Ah, with the bunker here next to it. Well, certainly the roof is new, or newer. But that doesn't mean the building's original bones was not here. I just somehow look at this stone, this construction. I'm saying this is new. This was not World War II. This wasn't here at the time. This thing had a place during the Cold War. I'm starting to get that feeling because Oh, way over here is the power station. Power station to be all the way over here and the cables and everything would have to cross the river here over to the bunker on the other side. I'm a little surprised at that, honestly. I'm pretty sure that spring has been there forever. At least I can see the little waterway here was certainly constructed at the time. I'm sad to tell you, but the power station is still in use. Somebody put up office in there. I would love to have seen the remnants, but in all honesty, we do know what's in here. So let's take a look at the closed security area. What secured the area when Mussolini and Hitler was here? You can see from the way the windows are bricked up that the ventilation grates have been removed. I can tell you that much. I will find a special love than the fact that all the steel doors are still in place. That I think is remarkably cool. And opposite the bunker, it's a very long industrial-like building that has been erected. 
I'm still under the impression that something else took place in here after the war other than mushroom farming which apparently was one thing but uh, oh, just a thought and if you're looking at the side construction here it's a pretty how shall we put it not straight yes let's call it not straight I don't think Phoebe and I would have approved but I'll also point out that not all of the steel doors are identical which is fine just saying here's the full tailgate here's the end and the point is slightly thicker and more reinforced expected against bombs a little bit like the Winkel to one and then here it's a very large plate with well I don't actually know if there would have been an entrance or ventilation here and considering it's full of something it's impossible to say what this would have been and then here about a hundred meters from the end of the train tunnel bunker is what I'm certainly hoping is some sort of a shelter or perimeter defense let's go have a look it almost looks like a Regelbauten doesn't it with a big train bunker over there it almost looks like a personnel shelter I am also okay with personnel shelters I would have preferred perimeter defense but okay I can't split hairs this actually looks like a standard Regelbauten except it doesn't and I'm just gonna have you look at the walls and the way this was constructed and you can square that up with any of the west wall bunkers or construction you usually see and you tell me why this is different all right security of the door as was expected the steel doors are still here which was not expected not often something you see that all the steel doors are here and intact damn i am impressed i really truly am and this is clean too okay this is not what i thought this was have a big room like this with a steel plate panzer plate there my mounts for a heavy machine gun this was perimeter defense but a rather large perimeter defense the close defense port still intact so there wood in the walls for the beds Hitler was here at least once so it would have been fully operational here's the other okay so now we have perimeter defense in two different directions and force access steel plate still here and the indents for whatever the whatever the gun mount looked like this is what I was missing with the other two train bunkers something for security so I'm glad at least here is something because that is what was missing in addition to 8,000 little to brooks everywhere I would also imagine all right now this is going to be more see at least the roof is significantly thicker than even in the train bunker to be honest and you see the building that was put up after the war in front of the bunker 
and the distance I can still hear trains running. Here outside the extremely large train bunker, I can't help but to think there's one slightly fun part of this is that after the war they used it to store dead fish. I don't know how to feel about that. And here not far from the train bunker, on the other side, on the other side of the front, here is the next. And it looks identical, although I will say it looks quite a bit bigger. It also looks like it's full of water. Let's go have a look. Again, when I say Regelbauten being built, it's usually not with vertical molds, which makes this rather interesting. Steel door in place. There's a little peephole. However, there's no close defense. There's no close defensive in this. No access control. How's that possible? There is... Nothing in here? It is exactly the same layout, exactly the same design. We still have the wood in the walls. So the only thing I can think of is that somebody quite shabbily have covered it up. But I honestly can't make that statement. It looks solid and authentic. Again, no close defensive. Couldn't cover that up. This may just have been a personnel bunker. I, I don't understand that there's nothing. This is just as solid as everything else. I don't see any divisions or changes. That's very strange. Everything is in place as it was before. Steel doors, everything. All of them, but no close defensive position for the crew at all. I can't believe that even the split doors are here. That's absolutely amazing. And gives us everything. Somebody here must have cared, but I don't understand why there's no close defensive. Well, I mean, that is a close defensive port, I suppose. And then in the inner door, there's a little glass. There's a little glass. Here, there's, can I still see there's little pieces left of the glass? So, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll chalk it up to it being uh, one of the oldest. Let's do that. Heavy, reinforced, thick roof. No defensive or offensive measures. I find that strange. And the next one over, as you can see, is being used for a gardening shed. But it did have one firing port now than the other side, so this is a defensive position. Over here is the train bunker, and you can clearly see the overview you have of the valley from the bunker sitting right here. And here with my back to the tunnel bunker is the sixth of the perimeter defenses. And there is, well this one is facing from the east. The others were facing in different directions, overlooking the railroad direction. And others were facing away from here. I think the most sensible thing I can do is imagine this is a defensive perimeter of this valley that would probably have been cut down. These are fairly young trees. Let's see if we can get in. 
Interestingly, the last one we saw that was used as a garden shed had a very small entrance, just like this. This is rather interesting. Uh, probably because it's full of water. Yeah, that's not really new, is it? And, but once again, the steel door is in place. But I was surprised at the uh, at the fact that they said this small entrance door, like you see the east wall, tells me maybe this is a somewhat newer construction um, where they went with a smaller entrance. Well, this looks like something I have seen in Belgium. Or was it Holland? Immaterial to the story. This is a perimeter defensive bunker, very similar to the one we saw that was blown up at one of the other Anlag uh, Mitte out in the forest. Perimeter defense. Three different directions. You had a escape tunnel. You even had a close defensive. And you had another close defensive for the door. This is a security bunker. Straightforward. And it's kind of cool that the emergency exit has been excavated and what is really cool is that all the damn doors are in place that is just not that much not moving hey spider buddy so you had the pillars you had the weapons on you'd fight in three different directions secure your entrance and your emergency exit that this is what i have expected to see and we saw that at Anlage Mitte, except that was completely destroyed. So this is what it would have looked like in one piece. Absolutely brilliant. And I think the one that I will from now on classify as garden shed is of the same design, in three different directions, overlooking the train tracks with a small entrance door. But all the parts are here. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. See this entrance? There's no door here. It's just a very small entrance. It's a very small entrance. You have to bend down to get through there. We've sort of seen that before. We've sort of seen that before. And the east wall, they all had small and narrow entrances. You had to bend down through. All right. We have now seen the security perimeter. And I would say I would show you the firing ports, but, um, well, as you can tell, all massively overgrown. But that's all right. It's there, it's intact, and it protected Hitler's train. What else do we possibly need to know about this? And then there is the fourth one, which is exceptionally massive and large. Far larger in design than any of the others. As you can see, this is quite a bit different and quite a bit bigger. The shelter tunnel here was also built in 1941, and it was intended to serve as an underground railway shelter for Hitler's staff trains. The tunnel was the other part of Hitler's headquarters of Anlage Süd, with a length of 438 meters and hidden inside the mountain here. It had a ceiling height of almost 6.5 meters and steel doors at each end, and it was the only tunnel bunker that the train could pass straight through. There's also a bunker for technological facilities, an installation tunnel, a single track railway siding, a wooden platform was here between the tunnel and the railroad station, and a causeway for unknown purposes. The tunnel walls were made of concrete with reinforced concrete, and the vaults were made of brick. There was also a bunker for the cars, but I've yet to locate this. Now, regardless of how or where the two men actually met, they remained in the area for a day. 
and the next day Hitler and Mussolini drove to the airport in Krosno and flew from there to Ukraine to jointly inspect the fighting troops there. Here they also spent a day before returning to the train shelters from where they would return to their respective homes. But once again the information about the duration of their stays and trips, including where their meetings were held, are conflicting. But at least we have photos and video from these events, so we know they did take place. But why the discrepancy as to these two famous men's time here? And why here, in the first place, they could have flown in from anywhere in Europe, although this was the closest place to the Eastern Front? From 1942, it's probable that German industry moved airplane factories here into the tunnels, as Hitler would never return, yet no documents or photos or plans exist. By the summer of 1944, the facilities were abandoned because of the Red Army's advance. The Russians captured the tunnels in August 1944 and initially used them as field hospitals. After the war, the Stepina bunker was used for mushroom production, the other one for fish storage at one point. Today both are state-run museums and you can visit both of them. I am in eastern Poland, almost on the Ukrainian border, and out here is something really special that you have to see, but you have to come out to your seat for yourself. And since you're obviously going to have a look at the Molotov line or the forts at Primish, you need to stop here because this is special. This is not a train bunker like the others. This bunker, well, is actually a tunnel, a reinforced tunnel for Hitler's train that did come here once. And at the time it was here, I was parked some 18 minutes drive that way when he was meeting with Mussolini. And you had about 4,000 soldiers on duty guarding him at that very time. You had a power plant across the street and a tunnel running under it. And all of it's here for you to see. Now all we need to find them is a train. The technical bunker here is also in use by a local company and the hallway is currently occupied by a bat colony. I love technical tunnels so much, I don't know why I spend my, my entire vacation going through technical tunnels. So this ran under the street and up into the bunker over there. And this is both where people walked and the cables were down here as well, right? Are you still up there? Did you lock me in? <laughs> you talk to me? Yes! <laughs> no, I'm talking to you! Yes, this is the, the place where the cable is. Okay, I mean, I've been locked in in a lot of forts. It's not, it's not unusual. People and uh, some pipes. Hey, buddy. Why are you complaining? <laughs> Hi, buddy. So I guess he flies down here to his friends. German, German, German. Ow, German, we're pretty tall. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This rounds. This is original. Yes. But I, I don't, especially in bunkers, and then there's something that's straight, and then it turns round, and then it turns straight again, and nobody knows why. But if you go back 200 years and look at construction of forts, mm -hmm. same thing. You'll find all of a sudden there's something that looks like a doorway, and you don't know why. This is just such a massive. So what do you have? You have wood. So here you have the that's the construction wood. Well, that's actually the old, the oldest wood. And then awesome. I always said all the the German underground uh, construction facilities. I want to see all of them. Many, many, many. I know, and most of them are underwater or destroyed or mm -hmm. will get me killed in some way. Oh. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, but bats never bothered me. I named them. Uh -huh. I give them names and we became friends. Hello to him, to them. I named one of them Fred.
So you have reinforced concrete to begin with, and then you have bricks? Yes. What, what kind of rock is this? Uh, I don't know uh, what is in English, but it's not, 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 not. Uh, well, it's not sandstone. Really? So this is, how long is this? Uh, 40, 38. 438. Uh, 438, yes. I know. It's been a 383. It's probably because it's, both ends are open, it looks smaller. We have this huge power plant. Mm -hmm. What do they need? What, are the, what does the train need? Do they have repair? Do they have... What are they some having? lights. Some That's lights. a hell of a big power plant just to light up a tunnel. I mean, wait a minute, there must have uh, ventilation. There must have been ventilation. Uh, yes, this, uh, the air was came. So the ventilation came. Ventilation, uh, electricity and the water. So there must have been big pipes to suck out the smoke. Okay. Still, it's just a lot of, there's a lot of electricity going into this and I could never figure out why. One, one track, uh, right? We, we thought, yes, but maybe. Maybe those two. Yes, this concrete is uh, made after the war. Uh, some uh, shelters, uh, no shelters, uh, market magazines. Uh, oh, military? Storage. 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 For the, 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 the. or for fish. Oh, fish again. For ice. From Jesus, the, well, the fish the again. <laughs> Did the, so the, the Polish army never took these over? The Polish army. Or Russian or. Time, uh, after the war. And uh, they give up and uh, this storage. Came okay. In. So how long has it been a museum? Uh, Twenty years. Twenty years. This uh, cage years. made and uh, it's closed, but open to the uh, tourists. Okay. So in, this is uh, most popular in the language in the world. So yes, this is about, uh, this is uh, the good way. What you need to do is put on. Um, Google Maps, mm -hmm. put the website of the museum and put the opening. Oh, it is there. It is there. You had the opening hours there. Yes, yes, it is. Why the hell? That, why? I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> the, I, I looked somewhere and I couldn't find it and mm -hmm. I guess I found it anyway. We have on um, Google, uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, fan page on Facebook, uh, yeah, you the do. website, so we can do something. <laughs> and then it got dark. Uh, some people, uh, uh, this tunnel was closed, but you can see here, the movie there, there's <coughs> only one table. Uh huh, yeah. Uh, this one is five, six maybe. This is one. Uh, oh, it's like some, Mayo. Some, uh, some not good people <laughs> took in <laughs> and mm -hmm. get. Get out this table from here. Uh, the one rail. Rail one and two. So there is a rail. Yes. And there are no more rooms on the sides or anything? No. It's some small place like the other one. Seven in this uh, left wall, uh, wall. Yeah. So that's also why you can get away with having a smaller bunker in that sense. You don't have the technical tunnel. The other tunnels, uh -huh. you have the tunnel uh -huh. and then you have a, a small tunnel next to it for the crew. Uh -huh. For the soldiers, like in, in, in the wall, uh -huh. to that side or that ah, side. Uh, okay, I, I understand. So, this, uh, so, so you don't have that here? You don't, we, we don't have that. Why do they have Maybe it? Maybe this was uh, some uh, helping uh, tunnel to the Stampina. Stampina was the main. There's so much information that disappeared uh, from that time. And is it the funny thing is, I mean, we, we at this point in time, we all know it, it ended up with the with the, in the Russian archives, <laughs> no matter what it was. Uh, because the Russians got to, first the Germans took everything, and then the Russians ended up in Berlin. And then the Russians took everything. I love the door cutouts though. These are, are these the original doors? Yes. In this one and that one too. These are not exactly very thick blast doors. Mm. I mean, honestly. They're not very thick, I mean, they're not very thick for any kind of, it's not even an inch, this is, I mean, you can, you can shoot a cannon, I mean, you, you can shoot anything through this. 
But this was where Hitler's train was going to go without him and park. Hitler was never going to go here. Uh, once. Once. Uh, once, but uh, leave the train and go to Stempina. Okay, so he actually were through in the tunnel. And go to Stempina. Did the, so did the train go straight through the tunnel? Uh, from, from the Dijeshov. Or came from there? there? And there. Okay, because I was looking out there and go, I couldn't quite see if the train and the rails, they continued uh, or not. The rails was there. <laughs> On the other side of the little gravel hill. Uh huh. There is a new uh, bridge. Okay. You can go to, to me. And you see the uh, new bridge and uh, there's the rail train, uh, railway. Tourists came here to a uh, nice visit, uh, mm -hmm. night visit, and we will put the oh, light cool. off. And the red one stays. Uh, they have some. Uh, Orientation <laughs> or I <laughs> light. <laughs> Personal oh, that light. Is a light. <laughs> Personal light. And Pers okay. uh, we uh, put some um, uh, films uh, on the this on the uh, gate. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, the lecture uh, told the history of this building uh, inside this tunnel. Uh, from uh, yeah. Kushniki. <laughs> from the wall. There's a hole in your wall. Yes. Why? Betray. Find something. Oh, you're looking for the gold train. <laughs> <laughs> That's before the gold train uh, fever was made. It's like, I'm sorry. Was there ever a before the gold train? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was a before. Yes. <laughs> it was this time difficult to say, but uh, they I want to put uh, uh, inside some uh, dynamite and blow it up. Oh, so this is the uh, uh, yes. Oh, well, they want to uh, in case they have to destroy the tunnel. Yes, yes, and then of go, course go, uh, go to German. Oh. Yeah, I mean all all, all self-respecting tunnels have a self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the power station. And it's really interesting that the power station is now used by the business here. Well, there's a little museum in it. But under here is the hallway we went all the way to the tunnel. And it didn't feel that long underground. But under the road under the rails and into there. I mean, you gotta go home. As to what may lie in the underground, well, no GPR searches have ever been carried out. So I will see if I cannot arrange this in the future. At least it could settle the stories or open up a whole new chapter of what there might be to see underground. And one final note of interest, as Hitler began construction of these before his invasion of the Soviet Union, it is remarkably close to the Russian borderline. And thus there's a lot of Molotov bunkers just east of the tunnel bunkers. I'll show you those later. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebnus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you wanna watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.